show. Seriously. Good evening. This is the meeting of the Prince George County uh, Police County Board today, the 8th, 24th, 2024. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.38 p.m. Uh, we're going to take the roll. If uh, you are present just, uh, in person, just say here. And if you're attending the meeting virtually, just say present virtually. I am here. Thank you, sir. Mr. James, not attending. He's not here. Mrs. Bryant, I'm here. Thank you. Mrs. Springs, present. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Coleman, present. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Jones, present. Thank you, sir. Mr. Melton, absent. Mr. O'Neill, present. And Mrs. Ridley. We do have quorum. We'll pick up on our agenda. So, do we have anybody that uh, signed up for public comments? I think? Nobody? Okay, good. All right, cool. And I think there are about three, uh, three jurisdictions, and so it went up to the 
Ninth Circuit. We've not okay. seen anything in our circuit just yet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and this just came down on April the 17th. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Thank you. Okay. Once she's finished with... Okay. okay. So, we, we know that the... Um, <coughs> The, the governor has until May 30th to yeah. either sign or veto. Right. So I guess at that point, I would request that we get um, get a summary. Okay. Legislative services, as you well know, does, does a summary, yeah. but maybe that highlights those so that that could be put on the agenda after in one of the June. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Pogini. Uh, next up on the old business is policy recommendation process. If somebody can help me remember what I was supposed to talk about, <laughs> policy recommendation process. So that is um, this document here that says the CDC proposed policy um, recommendation. And, um, oh. Yeah, we met about it uh, earlier. And so there are, um, a lot of this is not new to you all because it, we have the AC policy, um, ACC policy recommendations that they've already submitted to the board and I've attached that. So there are a list of six um, policy recommendations that I would um, request that we look at today. And then I do have, uh, I do have a question if there are any recommendations from the bill did not, that did not pass this legislative this, um, season. Do you want to recommend any um, to go for next legislative um, session? Um, I guess we we'll probably will. Okay. And so I just wanted to, you all to talk a little bit about that. And then we have the last four, five, and six are policies that um, I wanted you all to look at and have a discussion about whether um, these are things that you, what we're doing today is just whether you support them. And then I can actually draw up the policy itself for a formal vote at a later date, but I did want to have a discussion on these policies. Okay, so four, five, six, seven, all internal fair uh, interview, interview, interview report. report. Yes, and I think we talked about that. At the yes, last we meeting. talked about that the last year. Right? Yeah, we are on that, so we have any questions or thoughts yeah, that we yeah, on that? On that one, do we... Uh, the hearing board, not the hearing, charging committee, mm -hmm. can they get copies of it recorded if after that? I mean, do you, are, are y'all access to that? You no, that was part of the issue that there were some interviews that were not recorded. Mm -hmm. So if they're not recorded, if they have, if it's in their policy that they don't have to record, they won't record the interview. But when it's recorded, you you, Absolutely. you, you yeah. can look at them. We right. actually look at them and we ask if listen to them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. Okay. Yeah, so. so it's been really common practice then, like for you guys to have access to those interviews. The majority, yeah. It okay. depends okay. on what okay. municipality exactly. it is. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So we're thinking, um, and so I thought that would be great for everybody to do the same thing. Um, so that way, if uh, any entity asks for a follow up or uh, other uh, information then that officer would not be able to change his story. And if we would have the second statement that the officer made to compare it to his first statement to be able to say that. A lot of times, in my opinion, when I was thinking is that if the officer makes a statement that protects him, uh, but we don't have it recorded, then how can you hold somebody accountable for something that you have no evidence that they actually said? Yep. So um, is there anybody uh, that will be against Having uh, recommending that all internal affairs interviews be recorded by all law enforcement agencies. I was initially going to ask for more context, but if it's something AGC does routinely already, then yeah, I don't see a problem. Okay. Yeah. And this, who would this recommendation be um, going to? This is to the. This would be to heads of all law enforcement, or are we looking to make actual legislative changes here? Well, we would actually ask to make a legislative change. Um, some, some, some police, some law enforcement agencies might have it in their purview to do mm -hmm. a law because the, you know, the law is silent on it. Um, but if we want uniformity around all the agencies, then we would be going through the county council. Okay. 
but, but we may have to look at the legislation because there are certain requirements that this body can do. And there may, even though it's a whole, we may have to make some changes legislatively to expand the purview of this body because that goes beyond what the current purview is. Even though it is silent on certain things, it's still beyond what this PAB has been charged to do. So it may have to be something more formalized rather than just a policy. I, I don't know if like, or I guess my question is like, does it, would it would it be beyond like outside the scope of what we're able to provide? Because I think to Carlos' point, the like I think defining factor in what is a complaint or who is a complainant versus who is a whistleblower is in like involvement in a specific incident. And so like I complain when I'm involved in an interaction with a police officer, and so I'm a complainant versus I have, have knowledge of practices that occur which are problematic and therefore I would like to let someone know. And I think they should be able to let us know and then I I don't think it's an abuse of power to direct that information to the appropriate bodies without then, like without ha having the obligation to return it to the law enforcement agency. No, I'm not saying that, but when you was talking about a policy or whistleblower, I'm talking about the process of it going straight somewhere else. Because right now, the only thing that this body is empowered to do is get it and send it. Right. And so if if there are, or to speak on it when you all do that annual report, to to start to talk about you think that there's a gap or on those types of cases, and that may be the first place to start. But you you don't have anything where you just, Hold it right now. Well, I guess the only way, say, say a whistleblower don't have, <clears throat> he's not getting heard, and they file a complaint through us. You know what I mean? They say I got knowledge of the officers um, are, are taking cell phones or something, mm -hmm. and he's not getting it. He's not, and he and he does a complaint to us. You know, it comes that complaint kind of, and then we can send it to whoever and see what's and ask what's the problem. You know what I mean? And they say, "Well, how you know?" Well, I, I think I don't I don't see the difference between I, I get the formality of like a legislative you know demand or like that. I get the process of having to go through a bill and change things. So we statutorily statutorily we have it, but I don't see the difference in us formalizing a process that would happen like if we had like a town hall. Like if we have a town hall and someone in the audience is like, hey, this bad thing. Like for example, when we had our last hearing, Ms. Brave Boy was present. And so if a person in the community is like, I know that, you know, oftentimes I see this in my community, this is an issue. Well, then she would hear that and do what she gets to do with that. So can't we formalize that process a little bit and just say when we receive information that isn't a complaint, I can allocate it to the appropriate authority. I think that's what I'm, that's, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's, what I'm yeah. saying. Okay. I'm saying it can't rest with us. It has to Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Yeah, my, I, my, my misunderstanding. Okay, yeah, it yeah. can't rest okay, here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I thought I heard maybe there was some interest and maybe there being a more formalized that allowed it to rest here if we if if they wanted. But we can always send anything, whether it's a whistleblower, whether it's a complaint, it can always go through that. But I think the issue is is whether it goes back to the police department or whether it versus it going to the IG. And so I mean, I think I mean the federal course, the federal government has a whole process around whistleblowers, it's waste, manage uh, fraud, abuse, mm -hmm. use of authority. Like we could maybe draw from the federal government's policy on whistleblowers and how each federal agency has an IG. And that's why the IG is good. That's mm -hmm. not right. So, so it can go. So I'm I curious do. about your again say here. Your, when you say it rests with us, I, I, what do you mean by that? Because I think some told you. Well, she said have a policy, and the 
Well, the reason I asked about policy, right? The reason I asked about a policy is because if someone writes, um, sends us a complaint, we automatically send it back to the um, law enforcement agency right. for um, mm -hmm. investigation. Right. And so, does that under right mm -hmm. of the Police Accountability Act? So that's why I'm saying. <coughs> And, can we, yeah. I, and, and that's why I'm asking you for a little bit more information. If we were to send it to them, what would be your recommendation that happens with it? I guess that's what I'm trying to be clear on. I guess what I'm looking for is language that um, denotes something as a whistleblower as opposed to yeah. a regular complaint. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still yeah. transmitted. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah.
we have to have the policy so that we can tell them that Stop this is our policy as a PA, mm-hmm. the PAB. You yeah. know what I mean? We have to be able to tell them that. You know what I mean? That we can't do that if we're going to take it and then we go let the yeah, I think, I think our policy right now is silent on that, right. where, that yeah. you have an option. All it says is that you have to transmit it to the LEA. And so if you have to give it to them, and there's nothing that says you can do something otherwise, I agree with you that we need to have, if not a policy, some kind of process, and it's designated it's in writing, but, you know, so they can't complain about it later. Because you have to say that it's confidential, it goes to the IG, the eyes on are limited, and that kind of thing. Yeah, can I ask Does do we know if the IG's office already has some kind of whistleblower procedure or process? I don't know that. Is it, if they I already do, why. then we could. It might make this a lot easier, like scaffolding on that. Right? That was the whole. That was my suggestion that we maybe table this okay. and have um, counsel, legal counsel look into it more to see exactly what the process is, what we can do. Just call it. And the past we've done that. We've exactly. actually sent it to the IG's office. Okay. There's no policy.
But before then, you're going to bring a letter to us next meeting for yeah. us to look at. Yeah. For five, we'll have a discussion based off of more information that you and, and uh, any camp will yeah. look into. Right. Um, for six, would you be able to draft some language for us for how yeah. we would go about changing the code? Yes. Yeah. Just so we can have something to look at to sure. discuss at our next meeting? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Before we leave um, from, from this particular paper, there's another one that is um, very sort of simple, but I, I do want to put it, which is to change our current calendar goes um, for, from you know January to December, but our fiscal goes from um, July 1st um, to June 30th. And um, I've actually talked with Attorney Camp and said, you know, she recommends that we go ahead and change that so that the two are aligned. And I wanted to have some discussion and get your thoughts on that as well. But I did want to, no, you hadn't, but I do want to add that if that were the case, part of the conversation and hesitancy about it was that there's a December 31st date for the oh, annual yeah, report. report. Yeah. So I thought part of the discussion was to see whether or not there would be consideration to change that due date to follow the fiscal year rather than the calendar. Year. Well, could, oh, is it time for yeah. comments? Okay. So I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. We could still say this is what happened this year, and even if there's a requirement that we produce a report by the end of the year, I don't think that's mutually exclusive. No, okay. I mean, I don't think that 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 negates the fact that we're operating under a fiscal calendar and not work oriented. We could just say these are the things that happened in 2000, whatever, and it'll just be up to that day. I don't think that there's... They don't have to be, but I think it makes it easier That's for us and all the friends that we include for the purposes of having it. So no, they don't have to, but I think it'll be easier for the board and for our tracking measures and looking at everything. It would make it easier. They don't have to be, but I think it would make it easier. But I, I would, it, would we have to modify the uh, yes. implementing instruction, the or the law that says that we have to do it right? Yes. But we'll be yes. 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 That's why I was up here as a, as a discussion. Yes. Yes, sir. But but the law said we have to do an annual report on January 31st. Or what yeah, December 31st. December 31st. Actually, if it says December 31st, then if we did it on July 31st, we'd still be within that. No, no, uh, it's no. written of the, of the, we of have the, to of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah we It's a of submission. It has to be. Yeah. If we submitted one at the end of this fiscal year, that would be a no. report at the end of the year. No. What you're saying? She's saying if we, we can submit early. Is your yes, exactly. We can submit the report early, which technically is true, and it's before Ooh. December 31st. That, that, yeah. would, that, that would change that way. Yeah. But what would be? Yeah. No, no, I understand. Yeah, I right. But what would be happening is that the citizens would be trying to get data based off of a year's time. Yeah. They'll be used to looking at the annual. Uh, I think that we'd be missing uh, some critical pieces of data and tracking. I don't disagree. So that's something that we have to figure and, out. And a good reason to change it would be so that we're not stressed at Christmas time. Okay. Okay. Holiday. 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 Okay. Why can't we have, we know we got to do the annual report December 31st. So we know we have to do that. But what the reason, what is the advantage of doing it physical year. I mean the physical year. So I'm saying can we do the physical year stuff, mm -hmm. but we know we have to do the annual report because we need the December mm -hmm. because we haven't completed some of our meetings and stuff to make to put some beef into our uh report. to the to the to the report? annual report. Mm -hmm. You know um but can we do is it what, why, why is the, can we do other things quarterly, I mean, a fiscal year, and still do, bo do both, I guess I'm saying. I what is important about the, the, the physical year? I think because um, we are still collecting data right through the end of December 31st, which is when the report is actually due, right? right? We could collect, for example, data through this December and not have 
have a report due until June. In which case we have a chance to look at our data, we have a chance to analyze our data, to put it together, and all that kind of stuff, and that's in our report. Mm -hmm. Right oh. now, and if we say, because someone came to me and said, well, why don't we just do it through the first of December, where you figure that our data is on police complaints and what happens and all that. And imagine what happens during the, during the holiday season. That's important data to capture. So it doesn't make sense for us to cut off that last month because we're making sure that we have all our data in place for the 31st. Mm -hmm. I know, actually, actually, I think that's a, that's actually a really fair point that she just made that we should give a little bit more thought to, because basically what she's saying is we start drafting the report and putting data together before the year ends, sure. so we call it a yearly report, so that we can submit it. But what happened this year was we still ended up doing work well into March, April for the report, anyways, because the data we can't we can't analyze the data until we have it all. How do we have all the data for the end of the year where the report is submitted? And yeah, this year, but, but so, so, the, mm -hmm. so the that submission winner, date, yeah. so the submission date could still be June 30th, right. but the report would then be covering the previous calendar yeah, year. Yeah, but see, the only thing the this year we should have. Yeah, the previous calendar year. Yeah, 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 you see what I'm saying? That works. Uh, mm -hmm. That sounds like a great plan. I think this year we're going to have a much more. For December 30th, the 31st. You know Absolutely, what I mean? So, we are. So, yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, we can miss that last month because we missed a lot of months last month, a year. We, we didn't do that. Want, sure, so, but you know, if, we, not, want, you don't if want that. we can potentially clean that up right. so yeah, that but, we're not, so that when we're presenting, we, so that when we have a submission date that our report goes to, out to the public and we publish it, mm -hmm. we're not holding off on a whole month of data. From the public. Yeah, but last year we had a lot of. No, I, I agree. But, yeah, but, but you say, want that to be an ongoing. What I'm saying is, is that, is that should that be, should that be, that's going to be an ongoing problem for us. So should that continue to be an ongoing issue? No, I don't think it'll be a problem because what we have, if even though if we have enough information by the end of November, mm -hmm. and we in the, in the middle of middle of December, if we have some activity in the first week of December, that's what we give them. We're just missing half a month or whatever. If we didn't do nothing, maybe it doesn't make that much difference. Sure. sure. I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. I, I, don't, I, don't want to think, I don't want to discount what you're saying, but I think then you're saying next December, we will give you the data for this December. No, but you talk about but you keep you I'm talking about you're talking about a month compared to eleven months. That's what I'm saying. But it, does, think, it gives you the opportunity but it's, but it's, to, to reflect yeah. the entire year and give staff and the board staff the time to do it let me, let me, <laughs> and the board the chance to review it. But let me ask you this question. Do we have to change we're reporting to the council and who else at the annual report? Mm -hmm. And the county exists So we have to let them know that we're changing it to to July. I, I guess. It would require a change. It, it would, would require legislative change. All right. And there is, yes. there's a legislative yes. committee. Number seven you're talking about. No. No. Okay. Number three. three. Number three. Number three. Yeah, number three. Number three. All right. I, I have two questions. One, what do other PABs do? Do they just do it by December, or do we know? Do they do? Does anyone else do fiscal year? Yeah. They don't do fiscal year, but of course, some people don't submit their reports on time, and so on and so forth. And so, we want to number one have all our data correct and submitted on time. And then. What what else do we do that is fiscal year versus calendar year? Like that, what what do we do that's fiscal and what do we do that's calendar? Like I know we, like we do something like our budget, um, even um, for example when we are, I mean I think everything gets correct if I'm wrong, but paying our budget covers all of our hearings which are on a fiscal year, but we're reporting on those hearings on the calendar. And so the change that we're talking about requires a legislative 
legislative change because the language in the bill references December 31st yeah. versus saying by the end of whatever fiscal year. Fiscal year. And right. then the other thing it would could change is how we look at quarters. So yeah. whether the quarter started July, August, September, gotcha. first quarter, second quarter, third mm -hmm. quarter, fourth quarter. Okay. So if we changed it to go with the with the budget, it would it would just reflect the same. Thank you. It's the same rather than. If we're planning budgetarily, it makes a lot more sense for us to know that fourth quarter, how much money are we going to have in the fourth quarter? Because right now, we technically don't have an approved budget, so we don't know how much money we're going to have in the fourth quarter. But how can we as a board plan for the fourth quarter if we want to hold events, send people to trainings, or do whatever if we don't know how much money it's going to be? It sounds like it'll make y'all lives easier. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 let's go for it. Yeah, that works. I think, yeah. right, I think that's what yeah. Mrs. Springs was like, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was trying to. It's passionate. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 Well, like you said, though, it's proposed. Eh? So right. right. Yeah. So I don't want to let us talk to I got to figure it out. Okay. So no, my big reason uh, oh. for this would be everywhere where you all have said yes, we can. Oh, I think we have a Um, I will go ahead and, and drop proposed language. Okay. And then I'll um, send it to you all to review. All right. Cool. I actually have one one question or point I wanted to make on on the ACC policy recommendation. In letter. Yeah. This uh, I don't know if, if this becomes a change or anything, but it's something that I've been thinking about recently. Like whenever we talk about reform and accountability and all these things, right? We talk about trainings, right? And like, oh, they went to sensitivity training, or oh, they did or didn't. But how are we evaluating trainings? Like, how are we evaluating the effectiveness of a training or the productivity of a training, right? Like, do officers actually come out of it performing better for it, or do they not? Like, does the does the training work, or doesn't it? I don't know if that's something that we that anyone tracks anywhere or not, but I think it's something that we could consider or could start asking, right? Like, we can we can tell you to go to sensitivity training, but if you come out of it and nothing changes, then there might be a problem with the training. That but you're don't you with. have you have a starting point, and now you can create some milestones? Are you seeing a percentage decrease in here? I mean, some start. That, I don't understand. We 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 won't know. Let's say they are having. Um, we're seeing a number, uh, an inordinate amount of immigrants being caught for X, Y, and Z, right? Because in part of what they think is because misunderstanding of second language or, or something like that. And so they start doing some training that helps them. I'm making this up. Yeah. Um, that starts to, to help for, for uh, residents with a second language. And so over the next two years we're doing it, we see a decrease in the number, you know, in in the number that are getting well, yeah, get, so I'm just saying we start to do the data. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not saying we don't okay. recommend training or we don't send them through. I'm just saying how do we know the training works? Yeah. Well, we do have here in Maryland the police standards training commission, and they are vetted. They're all their training is vetted. And so I don't know whether um, the LEAs are required to attend this training or not, but it could be something that we recommend. And I have looked um, in their catalog, and they do have that trained up. There is a requirement. Well, I think my, my, like, my, the point I'm making is if, if the same officer goes through the same training four times, Right. Is, it, is it a good training or is it a bad officer? You know, and that might be what you start to show in your right. in your data. Yeah. That we can do pre and post. Pre post. What you're saying. Post yeah, that, and that's all I'm saying. I don't know how we start to look at that. I just think we should try to start finding a way to look at that. So, Sounds like a good job. Going. Yeah, sound like a good job. Well, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teamwork. But no, okay, we're not we're saying. We yeah. start tracking it. Yeah. Just be pre and post. Yeah, but that's also, like, I read some, um, information where most police is still doing the standard stuff that is 10, 15 years old. It goes back to what she said. Are they, uh, I mean, that's a question for the police chiefs that we need to ask them. What kind of innovative training that you're using? Are you still going through the same old academy? That's an old system they're yeah. doing. There's that basic training. Yeah. I mean, what's innovative training you do uh, for 2022-24, you know what I mean? That is what, that's the yeah. question. But that's the questions that we need to ask the police chiefs, the police yeah. chiefs, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yes. you know, 
you, yeah, they're going through that same old training, and they know what to say, but they haven't updated it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not even the Chiefs, though. That's the yeah. Maryland Training no. Commission. Yeah, but that's where they sent them to. That's where every yeah, if you if you know. read national data, they're going. And I'll, I'll see if I can find that article. It said basically everybody goes by this old police train manual, and it hasn't been updated. No, I, I understand. Yeah, and what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that the question to the police chief, as a police chief, that's, well, that's what I'm getting to. The chiefs don't actually, if the standard is set by the Maryland Police Training Commission, that's a commission. So that if we have questions yeah. about the training, hold on, have, because they can't send they can't send officers out to get trained by trainees that aren't certified by the Maryland. Let me, let me say this. So the commission is who we want to talk to about have they updated their training? How updated is it? Because the chiefs are kind of tied in having to send them to the exactly. trainings that are approved by the Maryland Police Training And what I'm saying is they also are responsible to train their officers. It's another jurisdiction. I'm going to give you an example. D.C. They sent their police all the way to Israel to get trained. Mm -hmm. I'm saying they they have some authority on doing you got the Merlin standards, but they can also do other training because they send their officers to conferences and stuff on to, 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 to do training to also. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? So how about this? How about we uh, just ask officers, uh, I'm sorry, ask LEA what training has been approved for your department? And that's what I'm going to do. Right, yeah. I mean, if, that, if that's something that we would agree to, we can potentially get asked. That way, I think uh, us just trying to get to come up with scenarios without actually have what is what it is they do. And like the vice chair said, I think that they have to go for the state process this way. But we'll ask that question again. Sounds good. Thank you for the discussion, guys. All right, I'm, I'm so sorry. So I know. Hey, ACC, we'll go back to number one. I thought we were uh, for Ms. Ogeni. Uh, I think as we started with four, five, and six. So we'll start all over again. No, I'm just, uh, we're just going to go to number one. ACC poly recommend, uh, policy recommendation. Uh, policy recommendation. So we don't already started talking about number one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, and then number two, any recommendations there uh, on the legislation for 2024 that we did not, not pass? So thank you. I did, I, I did want to just say something. I went back to this, this case you brought, which is a pretty, and I don't know if you read it, Ms. Bryant, but it's because he's a parolee. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So he's a parolee. He has so. no right. He, he right. Right. Yeah. had no yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 so but I the court. That, and I know that there, you know, there's secret yeah. rights for people who are par parolees, but imagine how many parolees there are here, too. And yeah. so. But if it's just if we officers. see the case come again, right. knowing yeah. who the yeah. Yeah. he still has rights, even though he's yeah. a parolee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, not yeah. that yeah. right. Yeah. But I mean, I know, I know, but <laughs> not, not this, right. is, this is not an unreasonable <laughs> search and seizure based on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can do that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that was good. No, 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 no. Attorney Camp, I know you. I, 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 that was it? That, that was it. I saw that. that was it. <laughs> okay. I like it. All right. So we'll go back to the agenda. Uh, I think that was it on that. Uh, can you give me an update, Mr. Vice Chair? Yes. Yeah. So um, we want to. You should keep it one, ain't you? Oh, did I? Policy recommendation. So that's, that's what we do. Okay. Don't, don't do that, Mr. Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so we want to start doing at least one meeting a month that will do case reviews. Um, so um, I've actually been given a really good idea that I'd like to see if we can implement. Um, if I can get three, I can get three volunteers. I knew those hands were going. <laughs> Okay. It was that will designate um, 
um, five cases to me and the three volunteers. And then our next meeting will set time aside in which we will present those cases. Oh, I love that. So you, you need one more, right? Oh, I know. Oh, it's Frank. She just does that. And so <laughs> is it one, two, three, or are you including yourself? I'm including myself, but I mean, if, I if you guys four. are really excited. Four. Yeah. Well, so it was her idea, so I gotta, I gotta wow. make sure that she <laughs> gives you a spot. I'm taking notes with them, so, so can you tell me what? Mm -hmm. Before, uh -huh. so the thing we we talked about before, giving everybody three cases that's we'll start, out. That's we'll start, out. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. start with this smaller group because we've been having some some okay. attendance, yeah, and attendance and everything else. So I want to make sure that we get started. Everyone will still have all the raw materials, so we'll share the cases beforehand, so everyone will be able to see the cases. Mm -hmm. But basically, we'll have one individual who'll be able to lead on that. Like that. But we'll still all review the cases together. Like that. Okay. So with Springs, Coleman, Jones, and myself. Well, Ms. Bryant, Ms. Bryant wanted in. Well, you want in? If, if you I'll add you. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's make it a group of five. So each one will do a case. So we have five cases, right? Yeah, it's a five cases. So we five per, 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 I was going to do per. Oh, five, per, five yeah. cases per. Uh, oh, it's going to be five cases. Okay. Per. So I'm glad five you per. clarified that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to get one, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, never mind. <laughs> well, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For the Dr. next Coleman, meeting, Mr. for the next oh, meeting, I won't be here. Um. I'll be in Ghana. Or, oh, well. You got to dial in. From the <laughs> Yeah, right. You're going to pay for that uh, all right. Verizon wireless cost. All right, we're going to keep you on the group then, and uh, you'll get the next go around then. Yep. You'll get the next go around. Okay, I'll be back on the 26th. Yeah, so we'll do Ms. Spring, Dr. Coleman, Mr. Oh, Jones, yeah. and myself. For okay. oh, next time. Yeah. Okay. We probably should just start chronological order. Whatever we've received first for 2024. Yeah, I'll I'll see if you think that's reasonable. I think it's reasonable. Okay. okay. Yeah. And it'll be at the next meeting? So at the next meeting. Is it going to be at the first meeting of the month? Yes. Is that what you want? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll be assigned the files to look at. Yes. Okay. Staff will send out an email to everyone. And then we can also share the numbers with the entire committee so they know. So they can look at the cases beforehand, but each of us will be assigned files on and we'll be doing Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great back Yeah, well, yes. spring. I said that. Yeah. Okay. Uh,
Or am I missing something? Oh no, th- these are all at once. Live. This, this is the invitation Please. for them to come to me with all of them. Oh, yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And this is yeah, the designating who lives close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, See, my mind is already in the mother name. Sorry. It's a good excuse. That is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so uh, does anybody have any questions on it? We can go, go with this. Everybody okay. in favor of um, So are we going to assign dates or how are we going to do that? But, um, I thought you said that. So I guess we can't assign dates now. We got to talk about that, right? Yeah, I don't think we, I don't, unless someone else was, I don't think we talked about a calendar date specifically okay. yet. I think we just wanted to map out who we would bring. Oh, okay. This is the first. This is the first. This is for the first quarter. Yeah, right. we're still going to get to all the but other. But somebody had mentioned. Was it twenty seventh of next month? I thought we had mentioned we was going to have me here oh, because I we see. didn't have a separate meeting. You you didn't want to have a separate day to do it. I do actually kind of remember. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I thought that was part of. It. Let's, I, I move that we accept the um, okay. for the chief meeting for the ten people um, up here for one today that we do decide. Okay. That's what I'm saying. The okay. first okay. meeting, I was saying the first meeting, right here, whatever right. it is, right. these, this so, would be the most yeah, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Most is on the table to approve the quarterly chief meeting uh, that was provided to us. So the second by Mr. Burns, I'm not mistaken, on the table to accept the quarterly chief meeting. Document that was provided to us with the 10. Say aye. 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 Any opposing, you can, those that are sending virtually, you can just hold your hand up or just raise your hand. Uh, Question. Thank you. Thank you. Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right, cool. Can we talk about you talking today? No, okay. Let's make it clear. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the annual report. So for the first quarter, we're using the green belt meeting. Isn't that right? Okay. In this meeting here is the second quarter. It is the That's second right. quarter, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought we made a decision. I, maybe I don't have a calendar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was that the first, our, our second meeting of May would be a police chief meeting. That's all I'm trying to say. Isn't that right? Yeah. And these would be the people yeah. who we were invited. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yes. Isn't that what we said? Yes, that's not correct. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure we get it right now, because, you know. Yeah, I could have remembered. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all want to hear some I only drink. I'm the only drink some Merlot after this. But, you know, <laughs> y'all act like y'all drink more than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so that's the, the 20th of May. Yeah. 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 Okay. So well, that was the second meeting. I know we had. So we need to invite And this is the first group. Yes, sir. And then the staff will call them to tell us which. Again, not not late now, but to see which one will attend. And if if one uh, from one of these districts can't meet, are we going to replace them with somebody yeah, else? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And let me ask you this a quick question. You may not know this. Staff might know this. Out of these people, out of these municipalities. Which one of these have reported nothing to us? You know, we have some people, we have some municipalities that ain't sent us to complain or nothing. Prep for the meeting, yeah. You know what I mean? So is any, we, you know, we can track that. So we have it with some municipalities we haven't gotten anything from them in the last year or something. So I think that what we can do, like, you know, say prep for the meeting, we can ask that question that we can see if they've been in case. Um, any of the invited ten have not, and that'll be something that we will not give Probably just use a bigger room now. Yeah, yeah, the big room or something.
sorry, I missed who offered his second. I have it. I'll give it to O'Neill. I'll give it to him. I got it. Oh, should I call out Mr. Jones? I got it. No, no. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yes, sir. Yay. Would, yeah. we, would we, on our next round of interviews, did we agree or vote on using the same board members? No, so we're going to change that around. No, well, those okay. board members that weren't well, here had, had other prior engagements. Okay. Every board member it, it will be present in the interview yeah. that they can be present. We're not excluding any board members. Maybe I'm, 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 when we did the interviews with administrative hearing candidates, it was six or seven of us. Remember? I remember. I thought it was a suggestion made that we would use those same people for the next interview. Yeah, we'll no, no, okay. that would be unfair to the people okay. that were okay. here. Okay. They, right. 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 they are part of the board. Yeah. Was yeah. Anybody who down down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> was so, 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 Cleveland. Y'all were trying to get up there. Let me finish. Remember when we did the question, you had enough questions just for the seven of us. So you're saying now. We, it'll be ten of us in there. I mean, can come. I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not including nobody. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it, it, no. When we did it before, mm -hmm. I thought it was a suggestion that those same people would be there. Uh, of subcommittee. So let me say for the record, that was not suggested okay, okay. by anybody. All right. All right. Not suggested. All right. Well, I'm right the down. only suggestion that we made is that the process continue to be used moving forward. Okay. And at that point, we were going to change, look at the questions. But it's not said to any board member you know, that you can't come to the end. Because I think that it's very important. All of us have input and vote for the HB members. So, no, I don't recall it being a suggestion. And I will say what, what it was is the selection of the day was where you all could get a form. Right. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm easy. I'm easy. It's just that, that some people won't be asking questions, some people will. Right, right. Okay, that's all. I, mean, I know I have no problem. I just want to make it clear. I, I thought I did the 13th time. So. No, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't make it clear now. No, we're good. One thing I think I'm looking at. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so moving on to new business. Thank you, everyone, for accepting uh, action plan dash Mr. Lafayette Nelson, sir. Yep, sir. All right, thank you. Um, I don't know if you all may have gotten a, a printout copy or an opportunity to review uh, last week. Uh, but I had hoped to put together a dashboard that kind of simplified the goals and, uh, and some of the me measures that we had put together in our action plan, uh, put it on a spreadsheet for us with the corresponding quarters that um, it may be due. Um, again, this is something that can be revised to be uh, suitable or complementary to, to whatever we prefer, but I at least wanted something to exist where we could kind of, in a snapshot, be able to see what is due and what quarter and kind of check it off. So where you see black boxes is where I estimated we had indicated we would want something done each quarter. Those boxes can be replaced with a check mark or whatever. Ever. We can put it in this to be sort of a, a snapshot guide of all the things that are due because we have quite a few things due each quarter uh, and a lot, the far majority of things are due at the end of the year. Um, but I think it's important to have uh, something to go by uh, so that we can kind of have a tracking system in a, in a way. Um, I don't know if anyone had any questions. Uh, I'm not 100% certain I captured every measure. Uh, but I did the best I could using the action plan. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think you did a great job mm -hmm. in capturing everything on here. All right. So I have a question, um, and it's goal five. And I think this is just really probably a moving of the check mark or whatever we choose to put in there. 
um, conducting state legislative review each session and conducting county legislative review each session. I know those occur at different times. So for example, the review, if the state legislative session happens January through April, then that review would probably happen sometime in quarter two or three. And then um, when is the council, the county's legislative session end? That's like, it's fiscal year, right? Now it's fiscal year, so that would be a quarter three. So that would be the only sort of looking at this now is the commentary to move those around so that they more line up with the timelines for those specific legislative okay. sessions. But, but is it, but, okay, maybe I'm missing it but but wouldn't that conduct state legislative review session? Mm -hmm. That's a task we completed already, though, isn't it? Because we did that. You gave us a review last week of, of, of our legislation as it relates to the PAB. So that's a task that we have completed already. Right, that's what I'm saying. So it can be moved right. from, because right now it's designated for quarter four, and it should be moved to an earlier quarter. That's what well, I'm saying. But we haven't finished but we are yet. Yeah, yeah, we're not done, but we should have a, but it shouldn't be the fourth quarter. It should be, it should line up with whenever those sessions happen. That's all I'm saying. But the, let, me, let me just say, Carla, on that, at least on that, it may be for the state, mm -hmm. only because we will do the review in anticipation of January. So, so it either be the third, yeah, it would be mm -hmm. the third or the fourth, because yeah. you probably want to, when they start having oh, local yeah. meetings, yeah, yeah. October, September, October. You, or, or like you say, it would be, we completed review for the last session, but we introduced, uh, Oh, we go review, uh, review that we want them to do what, what we want them to do in when they started a new session for 2025. Yeah. So it could be it could be what is we in the second quarter now? Yeah. yeah. So we would it would be the second and the fourth or the fourth or the third quarter because we we could meet with the legislatures in the in the third quarter third to, to say here are some of our recommendations that we want you we'd be interested in introducing. So one would be, and maybe you, maybe you, one is let review of previous, previous legislative, and then one is to prepare for the new legislative session. Because I want to think council, they they don't go out, they are really year round. They are. Yeah. So yeah, they, they have a legislative they, year, yeah. and it's by, it's yeah. by the fiscal year. They start back yeah. in July. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying, and all of that. this one, this one could be a dumb question. Does this, does the whole fiscal versus calendar year matter with, in relate, as it relates to this chart? Like, is there any, just it any does. Right? Okay, yeah. It, it, it matters just office. what number, what quarter, what quarter it is. Also, like, Q1 just doesn't mean January through yeah. March, right? That it would just be mean whatever. Whatever y'all, whatever. Oh, okay. Whatever year three of us. Unless we change yeah. to July. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. So. But Q1 would still be. Q1 would be Q1. We just would right. know the months. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think that, I think this is good. I mean, you know, yeah. I, 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 I mean, so well, so let's think about we supposed to vote on this. Seems like you're the move. No, because we don't keep these these people hopping on if everybody agrees. Go ahead and make that motion. I make a motion that this is very good. Vote on it. Okay. Move on. <laughs> Motion made that this is very good and to accept the uh, the tracker that no, no, they talk, that's the right of the second by second by Coleman. <laughs> All in favor to accept this uh, this tracker say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Huh? Unanimous. That's good. Thank you, Mr. Mel. This really Thank is you. good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Just curious as to how we'll then assign responsible parties, Mr. Melton. I know that was listed on there. I'm fine with the idea and the concept, but I think it's missing. It has some gaps when it comes to who's responsible and how we'll be updating this. Yeah, so there's a column for us to assign subcommittees or individuals who would ensure that these things are done. Um, I don't know if staff might have ideas about how we can keep a consolidated version of this, uh, perhaps on our our um 
our team's channel. We can have it somewhere where it can be updated. Um, but I would love to be able to place it somewhere where we can update it, but then it's also sort of the same version that we're all working off of um, without the risk of somebody deleting it or something like that by accident. And, uh, you know, I, I know I talk about subcommittees, but I do think it works really well when we have individuals responsible for certain duties who can take care of that for us. Um, so I'm not sure if someone has a particular interest in volunteering for something like that. Uh, but just making sure that these, uh, these quarterly assignments are accurate and then figuring out, you know, um, who might be responsible so that it's, a, um, you know, updated ongoing, uh, as we get things done. Maybe a way to just share the responsibility of like, right? Do we just talk about it at the beginning of every meeting or once a month or something? So, so not one person has to do all the updates. Yeah, I was going to say something along those lines. Yeah. Maybe we can all look at it, and if it's something that moves us, mm -hmm. we can take a lead. But we can all do look at it and pick some things where we can do subcommittees on those particular things, so we would know, and everybody's responsible for that particular thing. Test, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So I think we should definitely everybody look at it and figure out things that they like, and maybe for the things people like, we can do something that way. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the maybe the first meeting of the quarter, we can make it a routine thing where this comes out, and we just kind of align all of our expectations. Everybody do their diligence. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. You said the first meeting of every quarter. Yeah. Well, so far we're doing case reviews, so we'll do this as well. The first meeting of every quarter. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ms. Milton, the, the blackout area is just that. That was the suggestion. That don't mean we did it already. Right. It's like based on what what I saw in the plan, if it said meet with LEA, LEA heads quarterly, I put a black mark in each quarter because that's what we said we were going to do. Um, I see, I said that we could probably change the black to a check mark if it's complete. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, this is what you do, not done. Right. So, because we would start with a blank one for 24. No, I was just looking at, you know. The... Yeah, and we, I left the years in there. Like, if, if it's better that we just get rid of those future years and create a new page every year, we could do that. Uh, I just wanted us to have a pretty generic template to start with.
Mm-hmm. You saw, yeah. Good. So I, I, it's timely that you brought it up. Wow. But there's a effort. There's some things in it that don't. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I do have. Leave, um, I'm sorry. I will link. Um, I went through the hearing um, list, you know, and people who were favorable, unfavorable, favorable with amendments and all that. And so we have it's a whole library of that. So this is a real deal. A lot of stuff. So I'm going to link it to the, my legislation area on the list there so you guys can go look at it. Awesome. Thanks. Great. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Under community outreach, I do have a, a, a submission. Okay. Were you done? Yeah, I just because you brought it up. Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. And it didn't make it to the to the uh, agenda because it just happened yesterday. But the uh, Prince George's County Executive Office, uh, the Office of DEI, they held a, a forum uh, uh, to address issues related to the LGBT had a variety of people who were from that community who shared uh, a lot of their, their uh, first of all, their, um, can you pass me that? The, the, the importance of pronouns, the definitions of, and I'll pass this around, the definitions of what all of the, the, the um, letters stand for, because some people really don't know. And so this was an effort to put it out out front for, for employees here, and you would be shocked to learn that all of the panelists had never uh, been asked to present to a, a element of the government, to a branch of any government. Well, a lot of them were from D.C. Now, there is an office there, but they rarely get a chance to meet people who make rules. Okay. Is that the meeting that everything was talking uh-huh. about? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she also talked about, they also talked about allyship and how we can show up for them. And that is the same way that people did uh, address discrimination. You you don't allow it to happen in your watch around you. If somebody speaks disparagingly or says something that's, that's potentially offensive, that you have the responsibility as an ally to use that to speak out. And say no, that's not appropriate. You, you know, this person is giving you their 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 pronouns. For instance, don't keep calling that person she if they relate to they. That kind of thing is very upsetting for for a lot of people. And finally, they did ask. This is what their big takeaway in, in terms of policing was that a lot of especially trans women have a hard time um, making a living because you have to change your, there's just a lot of drama associated with being a trans person. And sex work is a major way that they earn a living. And right now they can be arrested and they can be you know, incarcerated for periods of time for doing the only work that they feel that they're qualified to do. So they're asking that, you know, they want to, uh, uh, build a, a movement towards legislating uh, sex work as as non criminal. Uh, thought it was really great. Just for LGBT, for, for oh, heterosexual. Well, she both? just said she just said sex work. Mm-hmm. Being, being non criminal, non criminal. Maybe you could issue a citation, but not criminal because they're already under so much duress. I mean, get, getting kicked out when you tell your parents that you're that you're gay or that you're trans. Uh, so they go on the street. They don't have any skills. They didn't finish high school. That's the other thing. Schooling and uh, housing. Those are issues that that they face every day. So there's an office here, which is ah, commendable, and um, there's an office in D.C. and Baltimore that they have uh, specifically addressing LGBT issues. LGBTQ okay. Thank you.
information is on the email, and it's different locations and different days, mm -hmm. so um, you can look through it and see what's comfortable for you with folks your house the day you might be able to do it. And then there's a link at the bottom to register. For class. So if you do go, um, I'd be registered. Just let me know so I know. Okay. okay. Yeah, if we can, uh, let me know if we register and want to go. That's great. Yeah, thank you. And we did get that. Yeah. I registered for May 30th and it's not closed. I moved it. Ms. Ms. Ogeni makes an apology recommendation that they hold it close to the front. But yes, ma'am, you had to up. Yes, I just wanted to say that um, we have a couple of training conferences coming up. And um, for the one that is closest, which is the MML, we completed the process and, and I've given packets to all those who are here who are going. Um, if you have any questions, any issues, if you would just let me know that um, for now everything is in process. And I think my goal is, as a training coordinator, is to try and get these approved and through it as, as quickly as possible so that we're all on the same page. Ready, sir. Yeah. Thank you.